And so I'm glad to see you made it. As we are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He's alive. We're here continuing our study. If you're following along and saw the last video, you know we're in the book of Proverbs, chapters 11 and 12. We'll start at chapter 11, verse 15 today. Please try and take time to, to get through these videos. I understand they're long videos and, you know, at two, three hundred dollars an hour, we can't be wasting our time uh, on the teachings and instructions of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, chew it up if you have to. You know, break it down. Get in five minutes, ten minutes, five minutes. But try to get through these videos. There's a lot of good information in it. A lot of discernment in it. And it, it all preparing us for the coming of our Lord, right? We're just becoming more and more prepared, more and more likened unto Jesus Christ. You know, we're, we're trying to revive chivalry. <laughs> chivalry. <laughs> yeah, chivalry. You know, where, where, you know, men have a code of conduct, right? And, and it's all based upon morals good character, being kind to the elderly, being kind to other women, uh, holding the door open, opening the door for somebody, you know, walking the old lady across the road. All these things, chivalry, right? Acts of, of kindness that, that are done through courage, right? We want to be like the ultimate knight. Jesus Christ is, is the ultimate warrior, right? And although he never touched weapons of war or any things like that, and he never held public office or anything like that, he, he w was a true warrior because his courage, with his courage, his strength couldn't be taken away. His peace couldn't be taken away. You know, that's the thing. The devil and his agents come to us in, in one form. And through the Bible we see that when he comes, <coughs> we have the ability or the tools to withstand that. Not kill it, not destroy it, but to withstand it, to, to overcome it. Right? It, it can come to us like Jesus, a, a roaring water or, or a flood of sin, hate, violence, beating and abuse. Yet, yet he never spoke back words of vileness. Or, or he never condemned anyone. He was like a, a lamb being led to the slaughter, completely silent. Right? One of the people uh, punches him in the face and says, prophesy to us who hit you. And he's silent. Right? And why the silence? Because he was not sent to the world to condemn. And that's what the devil wanted, right? Even the demons who, who were thrown into the pigs or, or said, go, and they chose the pigs. But even they said to Jesus, have you come to condemn us before our time? Come to condemn us? You come to break the rules? <laughs> and Jesus didn't come to condemn, right? Jesus says, God judges no one. The word of God judges us. Right? We, we judge ourselves. Our own actions and our own behavior judge us. And that's how I, we identify people. Not, not everybody who says, I, I know Jesus is identified as, uh, you know, sons of God, but, but only those who are obeying. How does the lawless one identify through his lawless behavior? So Jesus says, uh, your own measure. This is what the Word of God does. God's not judged no one. Jesus judges no one. He, he hands you the measure or, or the judging stick and says, Okay, now judge. And, and your own measure is your judge. And the, however you live on earth, everything that you do to others later, after life or whatever, could be like karma. It's going to come back to you, and it's going to be done to you. Now, some people can go 20, 30, 40 years and, and never get caught in, in their bad behavior. But just know there's no word spoken, no thought thunk, or, or any deeds done, whether in public or secret, that has escaped God. 
And in fact, that's why we have these things. And, and this is why we know they can't escape God. Because the Word of God is living in its reality. And that's what we're going to find right here in this book of Proverbs. Is it's wisdom. And, and it's wisdom about reality. This is what, like, like I always said when I die, I'm going to tell God. Everything I witnessed and experienced, and I'm telling him. And that's exactly what Solomon's doing. He's an old man now, I'm going through all the stuff, saying, Whoa! This is what I witnessed, this is what I experienced, and this is what I heard and saw. Alright, reality. So let us begin at verse 15, chapter 11. And it says, Whoever puts up security... For a stranger will suffer harm. But he who strikes, he who hates striking hands in pledge is secure. Right? And, and I know this is a reality. I know this is reality. That's true. And you say, oh, well, how do you know? And Jesus says, and Moses says, hey, don't vow. Never take a vow. All right? And stay and, and reframe yourselves from any types of vow. Right? Or, or signing your name on a piece of paper made by strangers. Okay? People who don't uh, believe in God or not and they have their own system of government and their own gods and their own sacrifices and their own things. Right? Never sign away your rights. Right? Like the Indians. Just, just touch finger to pen and, and pen right. <laughs> okay, you lost everything. What? Right? Or or insurance, right? You go you go to the doctor. Okay, and we come and we say, uh, would you like surgery? Yeah, hey, it's bad arm. It hurts it, and I need surgery. Okay, sign this piece of paper before we do anything. Oh, what's that paper piece of paper say? Oh, we have the right to treat you in any way we see fit. Any way we see fit, we, we, you have no control. No control. No, no, and if we decide that your sore arm is just, you know, stop doing that. You'll be okay. And, and that's their diagnosis. And you have to take that. Right? Many people in, in the sick world say, well, you know, I, I love going to the hospital and I'm really sick and, and I but but this person has this experimental treatment and, and it works maybe and, and okay well here's the deal because you signed our paper you use that experimental treatment and, and then bam you get no more of us because you signed the paper right so so you have no control even if this medicine works they will try and convince you that because you signed the paper no, you see that medicine, right? Putting up security and, and shaking hands and, and things. Many people of America, right? Because it's written. Because it's law. Because we wrote it. We all shook hands and we like to shake hands in, in an agreement. In a vow. My, uh, husbands and wives, right? United States of America always wants everybody to... Go get married, and, and here's a nice marriage certificate for $100 or $20. And, oh, you want a divorce? Well, okay, here's $400 for the divorce. And, and just trying to suck you dry. They have no business or, or authority in marriage. And Jesus says the same. People who know God don't uh, involve themselves in, into vows because vows are, are written by men. Written by men. People in God's kingdom are married or together because they love each other. And that's why they're together. And they love each other so much they decide to spend every day of their lives together. Alright? And God says that that's holy. That's holy. Any time two strangers come together and can love each other, as though they're loving their own bodies. And they can do that through sickness and health and all that, right? Those you don't need a piece of paper. That that is a an American thing, not a religious thing. Just there to suck you dry, right? And, and it will cause you harm. Cause you harm. Same for Peter, right? 
Peter wanted to protect Jesus. Jesus is stranger and alien. Not of this world. Not of this world. Another place. Another place. Not, nothing to do with this world or, or this place. Stranger and alien. And, and Peter is going to protect Jesus. And Jesus is like, wait a minute, stop, 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 right? Because put that sword away. You're, you're going to bring great disaster upon yourself. On, on yourself. And, and so Jesus, being a deliverer, delivers Peter from, from that almost fatal mistake. You know, that, that's the thing is uh, trusting God above the security of men or the pledges of men, right? I, I mean, in the United States of America, they were taught real well American citizens make a pledge to the flag, a, a pledge. And, and all the while, laughing in the, in the face of Christians, because Christians say, uh, I would rather hang from a tree or a cross than, than ever bow down to a foreign god, let alone some flag, right? And, and so they're sucking people into to a false religion. Right? A false set of beliefs. This religion is a set of beliefs or morals, but, but which are by the majority of the people have come together to say, uh, we all want to live by these rules. Right? And, and religion could be anything. And although we have the Christianity, Christian, Christian religion, because we have a set of rules and beliefs that, that we will be God-governed. And, and that's our rules beliefs. Other people have other things. The United States of America has the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and that's our God. That, that's what we are ruled by. Right? And, and uh, you know, just like Jesus said, who's pictures on the money? George Washington. Right? And, and that, that's their God. Give to their God what belongs to them. Right? It, 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 all that is what has power over you. What has power over you? What determines your decisions each and every day? Right? A set of rules and beliefs. You know, that's what determines my decisions every day. Let's go on. A gracious woman gets honor and violent men get riches. I know that's true. <laughs> that's true. People who are rich, have a lot of money, usually played football or baseball or in some form of athletics. All right? and, and athletics, although we're in a modern world, it is a display of I am manlier than you. Right? It's like two bucks running and bucking heads and, and, the, and the mean buck or, or the survival of the fittest, the fittest buck. It's the woman and all the does, right? And he gets to breed the herd. And rich people, same. Same, same type thing. And, and in fact, I, I have a friend, and I know he uh, took second place in the state championship wrestling for Colorado. And very well to do. Right? Mean, violent people, aggressive people, A-type personality people, rich. And we say, wow, that's true. Jesus says, woe to the rich. Woe to the rich. You have received in full your blessing. And there it is. There, there, there's God's grace, mercy, and love. And he gave that to you so fully you don't even have a, a thought in your mind outside of all the things you have. Right? You wake up 4 o'clock in the morning worried about your stuff. And you can't think about nothing but your stuff. You can't even muster up a prayer because the time that is being wasted by all your stuff has consumed your mind. Right? God is far from you. He goes on to say, a man who is kind benefits himself. And we know that's true. Right? Jesus was kind to everybody. And God rose him from the dead and glorified him. 
and, and would do the same for you. Anybody who's willing to, to live likened to Jesus, right? being kind and merciful and loving and full of chivalry, good things will come back to you. It, it will benefit you. But a cruel man hurts himself. We know that's true. Bill Cosby, perfect example. <laughs> you just go and rape women unsuspectedly on drugging them. Cruel. Cruel. No no morals, no compassion, no just this flat out cruel and wicked person. And everything I did in secret so nobody knows and I'm the number one Bill Cosby dad of the earth. Jesus. But in the end, he's going to go to jail. In the end, we, we all see him for the truth of who he is. A disgusting pervert. And that's where he's going to go down in history. Oh, you remember that disgusting pervert? You mean Bill? <laughs> <laughs> the wicked earns deceptive wages. But one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. One who sows faith, faith, gets a, a sure reward. Right? Righteousness is our, uh, our faith is credited to us as righteousness. So if I'm going to display faith, right, do I display uh, a fake identity? Is that faithful? But like faith and fear are, are the opposite of, of the two. So faith doesn't walk with fear. Faith walks without fear. Right? Without fear. That's what we see with Jesus. This is how he was able to be led to the slaughter as a lamb silently. He had no fear. I know what's coming. What? In three days I'm rising back to life. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Kill me and I will show you. Destroy this temple and I will prove it to you in three days. Faith has no fear. That's how David goes and engages with Goliath. No fear. All right, I'm not afraid or ashamed to be me. Be me. No matter what anybody else says, I know who I am and I'm not afraid to be me because... Uh, I can't lie to myself, and if I don't walk in lies or secrets, and I be true, and honest, I have nothing to, to fear. I have nothing to fear. I'm not a criminal because I believe in Jesus Christ. Right? Romans did that. That's where the fear comes from. Oh, nobody said you're a criminal. The guilt and shame being produced makes you feel like one inside of here and that's where the fake identity and names come from that's where i'm protecting myself from who wicked and evil people right okay he goes on to say and don't be you know then deceptive wages right death it's the wages of sin. And that could be deceptive, right? Looks permanent, feels permanent. But but in reality, right, it, it is the the atonement of our sin. One death, one death, once, one time, for all. All people, and we, we look at the graves around the earth going, Whew, that's true. One death for all people. And it's in that death where we are released from the bondages of sin. And that's what Jesus proved to us. Right? And he was able to walk in faith without fear because he knew the truth. He saw God face to face. He lived with God in heaven. He was God's son. I know the truth. I know everything. And the deceptive wages. Right? Jesus died to become the Lord over the dead. So Satan is not king of hell. Did you know that Satan is not king of hell? 
and if Jesus took away his power and his authority, Satan doesn't even have power or authority in our reality anymore. That that's all been removed. What's the problem with the world? It ain't Satan. <laughs> you, you have to admit that I have free will and I can choose each and every day to, to walk this direction or I can walk this direction. Each and every day I have the ability to choose. Do I want to belittle my wife or call her names? People do this. Yell at their children and belittle their children or, or their neighbors or the president or whoever it may be. Or you can choose to, to find a reason to, to care for them. And instead of saying, son, go do your homework, go do your homework. So stop. Let me sit down and help you with it. Let me show you how to do it. Let me help you and, and actually physically get involved. Right? That's what Jesus found out. It was a lot easier pointing the finger than coming down here on earth, being daddy to everybody, and when everybody devoured daddy. You know, and, and that's kind of how it goes in the world. He is strongest in faith. He is the guy dishing it out the most. Being sucked dry the most. And why? Because God entrusted you with that faith, the, the ability to give it out and dish it out and, and not lose your faith. Not lose your integrity. Not, not lose your, your joy, your gladness. And that's tough. That's tough. God comes to give us a spirit of joy and gladness. All right? And everybody who loves Jesus will be hated by the earth. How do I find the joy in that? And that's what Paul was saying, right? My joy is not in the suffering. My joy is knowing because I'm suffering, I'm going to share in the glory too. In the resurrection. Isn't that amazing that, that we have already been resurrected? We were in Him when He was resurrected. We were in Him with Him, in the deed, in it, caught up. And, and that's the thing, first the dead rise. We must die first, and then rise, and then rise. He goes on to say, Whoever is steadfast in righteousness will live, but he who pursues evil will die. Steadfast in righteousness. What is righteousness? Right? Faith. God gave you faith, and, and you, because I believed him, said, That's righteous. That's righteous. Right? Because you believed him. Right? And what did you believe? That, that through the death of Jesus Christ, all sins are wiped away. When, when Jesus died, I was there. When Jesus rose back to life, I was there. Right? And what is our witness? What are we witnessing to the world? A, a dead man can speak. We're dead, lost, without hope. Now I have hope. And my hope is that death can get here soon enough to pay me its deceptive wages. Right? Where is the sting of death? Sting of death? Right? Some people are so afraid of the sting of death, the reality of dying, they will pay hundreds, thousands, millions to prevent themselves from dying. Some will go and buy tens and thousands of dollars worth of guns and bullets to prevent themselves from dying. All are in an effort to prevent from dying. I, I never, I, I, I just can't put my faith in, in a person who says, you know, that, that God character, you know, that Jesus character, 
isn't able to protect you, I am going to protect you. And I'm going to protect you with my gun. And I can't put my faith in, in you, your teachings or instructions, because if Jesus Christ ain't good enough, Peter, if Jesus Christ ain't good enough, strong enough, powerful enough, then, then who is? Right? And, and Peter, Jesus stops Peter from, from killing a, a guard who's going to come and, and take Jesus to be crucified. And can, 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 do I not have the ability? And Peter, Jesus reminds Peter, I have power over all things. And at my very command, I could call down angels. Right? Right? And Jesus in the Bible says that God will command his angels to protect over you. Thank God that they didn't come. One angel could have wiped the entire earth out, let alone the legion. Right? And they wouldn't have stopped. They would have took Peter and every one of them because had the word of God not been fulfilled, he would have become a liar. And it would have rolled up like a scroll. The sun would have fell, the moon would have disappeared, and there would have been nothing left of any element of anything of any kind. You would not be here today listening to this. It would have been done. But, but that's why God entrusted Jesus. But because I know you can. I, I give all authority to you. And that's what the devil and everything tries to steal from us, to take from us that authority. Right? Because God gives us an authority. God gives us stewardship over something. The, 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 his spirit, it's the Holy Spirit, and whatever you do, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. <laughs> The blaspheming of the Holy Spirit, if we took hate to the umpt hundredth degree, right? Hate times ten times ten to the hundredth degree. It's an eternal place where there is no escape, burning in, in the sulfur and fire forever and ever, ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> Here on earth, we, we even say, well, if you murder somebody, you only get ten days left. And we're Xing you and, and give you electric chair. And we, we have a limit to pain, suffering here in this world. But boy, some people want to throw others into fiery pits of hell forever and ever and ever. God is love. God is, is love. So the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit would, would be to say that the God being love is the opposite of love. The opposite of love. That's what happened to Moses. You dirty rebels! How dare you question God? How dare you ask God for help? Right? And that's what God said. You blaspheme my spirit. You made it seem as, as though I, I gave these things grudgingly. Moses, you, you had the problem. You, you were the one with the problem. And your problem was with me loving my people unconditionally. And so he invented all these conditions. You can only love God if you love God the way I do. Perfectly. <laughs> And that's where Jesus comes to take away those conditions. Now listen. Those of a crooked heart are an abomination to the Lord, but those of blameless ways are his delight. Right? Crooked heart, blameless ways. Right? And, and if we could just admit... Uh, my heart has served my wishes and desires and deceived me. <laughs> and uh, if I could admit that, right? And I said to, to God, God, I'm unworthy to be called your son 
because of these things that I was doing. There, there's no, that's blameless. And, and that's a delight to God's heart. Remember the parable of the uh, two sons, the parable of the prodigal son. He, he, God gave him everything, free will, right? Free will. Here you go, son. You want half of your inheritance and everything goes with it? <coughs> Here it is. Go. Have a good life. And when the son's stuff and all the money and everything that was uh, perishing and, and all this stuff that was... Uh, Things that, that he thought would, could love him and care for him and was represented as dad's love and care when it all ran out. Great famine comes across the land, starving to death. Right? I know. I sinned. I know what happened. I sinned against God, heaven, and earth. I know. I will go to back to my father's house and I will be a servant to his servant. You know, they, they the servants got everything. And boy, if his just his servants would give me a little bit, I, I'd have more than I got now. I, no longer worthy to be called my father's son, but a servant of all servants, servant of my father's servants. Right? Jesus says that that's right there when the man came to his senses. That's when he came to his senses. And he turned back to God. And God met him while he was still a long distance from the home. Right? So that's a delight. That's blameless. To, to say, I'm a sinner. And, and not only am I a sinner, God, like Paul said, I can't stop sinning. I can't stop. I can't stop judging other people. I can't stop condemning other people. I can't stop all these things. I can't stop sinning. And even though I know it's a sin, it's bad for me, I still do it. Because that's the nature of, of people. Men, women, human beings. That is what human beings do. Everything they were made to do. And that's in your nature. So, so the spirit of Jesus Christ is like opposite or contradictory to the natural man. And, and that's a process of, of saying, you know, even though I got free will. Even though I am not subject to any of the laws of Moses. None of them. Right? I willingly choose to be subject to them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I lay down my will for the will of God. I surrender. I surrender. I believe God. There's only one way out of this hellhole. Death. You must die. And that's the only way out. And if you could have peace, in your own heart, if you would admit that hey, even though you deserve rights, like the right to equal health care, the, the right to hope and, and the right to a future and the right to, to be able to get sick and not be punished for getting sick, you have that right. But that right is going to be taken away from you. That, that's like, you know, monkeys and gorillas got more rights than human beings, you know, and if you'd accept that, I, you know, <laughs> the only rights you have are the rights given to you by God, you know, you can be free as a monkey, and, and, and the world will hate you, because you're a slave, and if you're not slaving for the world, you're a useless, cheap, Dirty dog. Right? That's what you are. You're not a slave to the world. He says, Be assured, be assured, an evil person will not go unpunished. 
Alright, so, so when we think of Hitler, is, is Hitler in heaven? Just be assured, no evil person will go unpunished. You know, there, there are no murderers in heaven. None. None. And there's no whore mongrels in heaven. And there's no child molesters in heaven. Right? People who engage in sexual morality is not in heaven. Right? You, you will go unpunished. And nothing escapes God. Right? It's better to do hell to herself here in this world willingly. So that, so that God can punish you and discipline you here. Because here it ends. Here it ends. Fear deals with punishment. People who are afraid and know that they're going to have to deal with punishment. You know, we, we drug women to, to knock them out in secret where nobody can hear or know about it. Even the lady don't know about it because, because I know if I got caught. Ooh. Right? Dealing with punishment to a man who carries a gun. Same deal. You are dealing and afraid of punishment. Punishment. Right? When David engaged in Goliath, he wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid of, of the punishment. How about Samson? Samson's got his eyes gouged out. He's sitting in the bottom of a prison and says, God, uh, uh, I'm not afraid to be punished anymore. Uh, you can't punish me any more than you've already punished me. Could you just hook me to these two beams? And one last prayer. I, I bow to your will because it was the will of God that Samson destroyed them Philistines. And Samson didn't really want to. He kind of fought that. And, and he surrenders. I'm not afraid anymore. And he died with the Philistines, fulfilling God's will. Right? He says, But the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. Jesus says that everybody who believes in me has eternal life. You, you will be delivered. Right? He says, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. <laughs> right? And that's like every American woman. Right? The, the ring in a, in a pig's snout. And, and they put that gold ring in the snout of a pig so that he's not going <laughs> digging up grubs everywhere because a pig digs up the roots and, and he destroys everything. And there's the... the that's a woman without discretion, without shame, right? Ladies, you know, got boobs hanging out. We, we, we go to the store and, and we got uh, cute little names written on our 10-year-old uh, daughter's panties. Like, who's looking at them other than the pervert who made them, right? And, and, and these things, we've lost discretion. My, my wife goes to work and they tell her, you can't wear a dress. What? Can't wear a dress? There was a time in the world where women wore dresses. And you were a dyke if you wore jeans. Sorry. You, you were gay if you wore jeans. <laughs> and, and today, they, they, why aren't you, why are you wearing a dress? Why are you looking like a woman? Ain't that weird? Right? But but this is how things are, are being twisted in our world. You see on television, people selling their children as though they were prostitutes. For for the sake of, of goods and stuff. You know, they sell their bodies in their towns just to sell Pepsi Cola or, or Dr. Pepper or whatever, right? Selling themselves out. You know. No discretion. Right? Some people have no discretion over their mouths either. And they uh, 
talk too much. That's not good. The desire of the righteous ends only in good. The expectations of the wicked in wrath. Right? If you're expecting Satan to walk in that door, you have a gun ready. What is wrath? God's executing his punishment on people. I'll blow you away. And right there is where it goes. Hate breeds more hate. That's how it is. A murderer murders. Okay, the, the, this is how we, we know who Cain is. He killed his brother. And this is why we know Cain's actions were evil. Because his brother's dead. It's a murderer murders. And that's what they use for their protection. David, Goliath, you want to circumcise Stephen? Murderer. They had gods. They hadn't but gods. They were actually the people who sacrificed their children to the gods. Spurned offerings. They were murderers. Right? Comes in with weapons. Strength of man. David's not a murderer. No weapons come to you in the name of, of God. Strength of, of God's spirit. Right? Same with Samson. Faith. David. Faith. Jesus. Faith. Jesus says, when I return to the earth, will I find faith? And what does faith look like? Well, the closer we get to being likened unto Jesus. Right? Faith goes to the mountain and says, move. All right? Faith doesn't say, God Almighty, if you will, if you please, and all these things, and begging for mercy, and God tell it, well, move. Faith. Jesus says, if you had faith, if you had just the faith of a mustard seed, you would go to the mountain. Not, could not beg God, not ask me. You would walk to the mountain and say to the mountain, move. And it would move. If you had faith. This is what faith looks like. We want faith. We want faith. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. Truth, greed for money, love for money. You only want, want more, more, more. The more stuff I have, the more bills I got, the more problems I got. Right? People who have nothing, it's better to be poor and homeless. And be rich in God than, than have everything and be completely alone. Put you in a state of want. Sufferers want. Always wanting. It's tough to be poor. It's very tough to be poor and, and not want money. Especially in a world driven by money. It's tough. Especially when you ain't got money. Does it make you greedy to want? It's just, can we find love in the midst of whatever we're at? And, and if we're suffering, there's no greater want than the want to be with Jesus Christ. It goes two ways. Love God with all your heart, might, and soul. Want that the most. God in, in your presence. Right? I think we should get ready to stop right there. And, and uh, what does God look like? Right? Nobody's ever seen God. But what does God look like? And Jesus Christ being the living example of, of what God is. What he's about and what he looks like. 
his character and his integrity, his chivalry, these things. This is what God looks like. Right? If we're ready to do something good, to do something right, to do an act of chivalry, if we're ready for that at all times with courage, right? That that's good. <laughs> it's good. Because in that they will see God. They will see God. They will see the love of God. If I can love you, how much greater is your father, your dad? And if I can just be a small example of, of what it means to be loved by God, that's good, because in that they can find God, right? Let me small prayer. Father, Dad, go, go into the hearts and minds of whoever's watching today and fill them full of joy and gladness. Let them know, Father, with a small whisper, a small quiet voice into their ear, that, that you are not so far away and that your love for them cannot be taken away. We may walk away from your love, but if we turn back, you will always be there waiting for us. Remind us of your promise. Remind us of, of your faithfulness to fulfill your words that you will never leave us nor forsake us all the way to the end of time. And we know there's no end. Your steadfast love endures forever. Your kindness and your mercies will endure forever. Open our hearts and minds to receive that. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. <laughs> See you next time.